Hey guys, so I know it's been actually not that long, but I've been kind of holding out on making this next video because of this place that it holds in my heart. Like, I've been like in a really good mood lately, so I didn't want to just go on talking about it, but the video topic that I'm doing today is growing up gay in Arkansas. And yeah, it's kind of a touchy subject, but I mean, I guess that I, I brought myself into the situation whenever I offered it up as an option for people to choose from on one of my video polls. But yeah, so I'm going to talk about that. So I guess before we begin, I'm going to give like a an overview of what my family's like. So, okay. My grandpa is a pastor, or he was. Now he just goes to church all the time. They literally go to church like five times a week. My grandma prays in traffic. Like, it's bad. Like, they're super duper religious. Like, not that being religious is bad, but like, you get the point. Like, they're very, very religious. So, my mother was raised by them, and she was always like rebellious because she was forced to go to church. She was forced to do all this stuff. So, growing up in high school, my mom was like grungy and goth. So, I don't understand why she'd have a problem with it, but yeah, it's whatever. So growing up, I was always raised that being gay was wrong. Like, I remember watching an episode of NCIS where this lesbian couple got, like, murdered on a beach, and my family was talking about how they deserved it because they were gay, and that was one of, like, the defining moments that I realized that my family hated gay people for no reason. Like, I didn't understand why that was wrong. Like, they just loved each other. And it took me a while to realize, I think my first crush that I had was in fifth grade we would separate two classes, like there was two different teachers and you would rotate for different subjects. One teacher would teach math and science, the other would teach history and English. So there was a teacher in, or not a teacher, <laughs> there was a student in the class that was the rotating class with me and I don't know, I just, I liked him. like. I'd never liked a boy before, so I was really confused. Like, he just had, like, these really cute brown eyes that reminded me of a teddy bear. And it was in fifth grade, so I did like, had no idea. So I suppressed that feeling because I knew that my family would not allow that. Like, that was, like, forbidden. Like, I thought that, like, the devil was in me or something. So growing up, I would, like, date a bunch of girls. The majority of them were my friends to try and have, like, a title. Not necessarily a title, but, you know... Like, I just wanted people to know that I was straight, straight, because growing up, literally all the time, all I ever had was female friends. I've had, like, maybe under six notable friends that were males in my life, and guys would always get mad at me and call me, like, a faggot and a queer and stuff growing up, especially because I was friends with their girlfriends. So whenever they would do that, I would just ruin their relationships by telling them that their boyfriend was a dick, and then they'd be like, what? So yeah, they really, really didn't like me, and I didn't do a lot to help it, but also they were like hating me solely because of who I am. And at the time I was like, no, I'm not gay. Like I spent this entire time trying to convince people that I wasn't gay. And then after ninth grade, I really, really liked this guy. Um, I didn't want to come out, but he kept pressuring me into doing it. So I told him that I'd wait until high school to come out. So... The summer, like, the day that ninth grade ended, I had long, long shaggy hair. Like, I've had long hair my entire life. So I went the day that ninth grade ended, left early, cut my hair off. And my way of coming out was changing my Instagram bio and my Facebook preference <laughs> and ask.com. And in order to, like, I, like, there was my friends who knew, and I came out as bisexual at first. The friends who knew that I, like, told... And then there were certain friends, like, there was this thing called Ask FM where you would ask people questions, and I would go on their Ask FM and be like, what do you think of gay people before I came out to them? Because I didn't want to come out to, like, some bigoted, bigoted, hateful, like, bitch or whatever. So I went on their Ask FM and asked them what they thought about gay people. And then, <laughs> and then the people that, like, responded positively, I was like, yo, I like boys. But some of them I didn't tell. Like, my best friend Deja I didn't tell. But there was a lot of people that knew. Like, I was just like, no! What? No, I don't like guys. Like, dude, it's strictly, like, liking girls. No, no guys. But, yeah, I was lying. Lying hardcore. So then, from ninth grade to 10th grade, I came out. I cut off all my hair. Changed my style completely. Like, I used to dress in, like, super ugly baggy clothes. Like, I would wear, like, 
Aeropostale hoodies every day with some baggy ass jeans and some red Converse. And I was in a, I was in band. So I was like one of those kids. And then whenever I went to high school, I was, I'm sorry, I'm tying my shoe. Um, when I went to high school, I joined theater. Not that that makes you gay, but I've always wanted to do theater. Like I was in intro to theater in ninth grade and I just loved it. Like it brought me joy in that one year that band hadn't brought me in like all the years that I was in it. So I was like, you know what? Screw band. I'm not doing this. So I joined theater and I joined forensics, which is competitive speech. And yeah, that was part of the thing that I did. And I sort of, I didn't necessarily lose all of my friends, but like that happens in high school. You will realize that each year you sort of go through new sets of friends, or at least I did. So when I went to ninth grade, I developed completely new friends because I didn't have classes with any of the people I had in ninth grade. Plus there was like different people. And most of the friends that I made I made from theater, or forensics, or random classes. So I had this group of friends, 10th grade year, from my forensics class. They were seniors and I was a sophomore. And at the time, no one really, like, saw me as anyone different than, like, a gay kid. Like, I don't know. I didn't really know who I was, so I really used my sexuality to define that. Like... I would just become people's gay best friends, or people just knew me as that gay guy. And it started to make me really depressed, because I felt like I couldn't be who I was. And on top of my friends treating me like that, I was also going through boys, like, using me and cheating on me and doing all this sh awful, awful stuff to me. So, yeah. I was getting depressed. I was really, really sad and, like, suicidal and stuff like that. And my parents took note of it, and they, that summer, from 10th grade year to 11th grade year, they decided to let me go to Colorado. And, I mean, I've lived in Arkansas my entire life. I've been outside of Arkansas, but it was just for, like, traveling purposes. Never lived outside of Arkansas. So that summer, I went to Colorado with my cousins and my aunt. And they just, like, embraced me for who I was, like... They That was, like, one of the best times of my life. Like, I miss them so much. And, honestly, Colorado was so beautiful. Like, it's such a change from Arkansas. Everyone's so accepting. I could dress how I wanted. Like, I'd walk around in, like, girl clothes. Like, I got back and my mom asked me if I was a girl when I was in Colorado because of how I was dressing. But, like, a lot of people were like, yeah, they're all laid back because they smoke weed. But, really, not a lot of people smoked weed. Like, I would just hang out with my friends and we would walk around town and like, sneak out and, like, go to, like, 7-Elevens and get Slurpees and hang out with each other and watch movies in the park. Like, it was beautiful. Like, it was, like, everything that, like, an indie movie was. Like, that was my life for a summer, and it was beautiful. And it just, it changed me. Like, it made me realize, like, start valuing myself more. Or at least not as sad as I was. So then junior year rolled around, and... Oh, junior year... <laughs> I dyed my hair blue, I changed my entire wardrobe again to where all of my wardrobe consists of was black shirts, chokers, and acid wash jeans on top of blue hair. I thought that I was Halsey, like I wanted to go around and be this destructive force who listened to Lana Del Rey and like I was just so misunderstood and no one got me and honestly, I mean I had literally no drama like until the very end of the year there was this dude who kept breaking my heart but that was like the only drama I had no drama with my friends and then towards the end of the year some drama started and that was whenever I had like dyed my hair back and I was starting to you know stop experimenting with myself like I was starting to realize who I was other than my sexuality so then drama went around there and I went through a new group of friends because of a play that we did Xanadu I met my best friend Montgomery and Kirsten in Xanadu. And then I retained my best friend Deja and Jaden because I've been friends with them since like ninth grade. And they were in forensics and theater with me. And I was still in that class. That was the only thing that stayed constant in my entire life was forensics and theater. Like it had held a special plate, in, plate, plate place in my heart. So, um, yeah. So then going into senior year... I was like, you know what, screw it. Like, I just finally stopped caring what people thought. My wardrobe changed so much. I, like, I just dress different every day. Like, right now I'm dressed like an old man. Like, 
half the time it'd be like some days I was goth, some days I was preppy, some days I was an old man, some days I looked like I came from the 70s. There was no in between. And I stopped dyeing my hair because I freaking destroyed my hair, like killed it completely junior year. So I was like, okay, done dyeing my hair. It's going to stay this brown, red, nasty color. And then senior year was great. Like there was virtually no problems. I made a lot of friends. There was like little minor drama in my friend group, but then it was just us being like bitches to each other and then getting called out about it. But other than that, it wasn't bad. And I got the lead in the show, so that was exciting. I'd been in theater since ninth grade and was super duper like behind the scenes the entire time. And I finally got to like a point where I could express myself and I was starting to know who I was other than my sexuality. Like started to understand who I was as a person, my likes and my dislikes, how I wanted people to treat me. I started to really love myself and it was nice. And yeah, that was just like an overview of my high school stuff, like what the background knows of me being gay. But while doing that, sophomore year, me and a group of friends were talking about starting a GSA because we didn't have one. And we were like, well, we don't know. Our school's not really in the right place. So we talked and talked and talked about it. There was like me, um, my friend Odie, and Sammy, and we were talking about it. And we were some of the founding members. And then junior year, we finally got it like rolled up. Like they were leading it. And I was just sort of like watching it, even though I'd like been there from the beginning. And then once they left senior year, we, we held um, elections, I guess. And I was really, really wanting to do like be president. Like it wasn't because I'm like, I wanted a leadership position, but I really wanted things to change because there were still people getting bullied. I was still getting bullied my 10th or my senior year. Like, honestly, I started off the year going to all these meetings. Like I was so dedicated about making change, but I, I ended up getting vice president, which didn't really upset me. I was like, as long as these people have our best interests in mind and they want to help us, that's completely fine. But then they just started to want to interact with the community and show them that people were like good. Like, yeah, I understand that's really important, but that's like all they would do. Like we did like two events the entire year that involved gay education, which was what I was in charge of. And I guess I could have helped more, but like I felt more like a gay mascot than like someone they were trying to help. Like it was basically run by straight people with a couple gay people that stood silently. So after that, I just sort of left the club. I was like, no, I, I don't need this. I'll figure out who I am. I know who I am. I don't need a club to help me. And I sort of regret that I didn't stay in the club to help other people come out. But also I feel like that personal journey is just something that you have to go through, like not necessarily by yourself because I've had friends by my side for all this time to go through it with me. But, like, you figure out who you are. Like, you don't need someone else influencing who you think you are. Because that really, really changed me. Me trying to be how others wanted me to be until senior year when I was like, screw that, I'm who I am. And honestly, if I'd never came to that realization, then I don't think that I'd be alive today. Yeah, it's super depressing, but it's true. Like, you really don't need to let society bind who you need to be. Like... Just because you're gay does not mean that your sexuality is the only thing that defines you. Like, that's just a preference. You like guys. Okay, that's one small thing about you. You're still an entire person with a personality and feelings, likes, dislikes, interests, all this stuff. That's who you are. Your sexuality is just who you like. You don't need to be using your sexuality to define who you are. You are a person with or without it. That's the point that I'm trying to make. Like... Just sort of rambling, but honestly, I think that a lot of people don't understand that today, that you don't have to be everyone's gay best friend. You can be someone's best friend. You don't have to be just a gay guy. You're a guy, or you, you're you not a lesbian girl. Yeah, you like girls, but you're also just a girl. Like, you're yourself. You don't need to be confined to your sexuality. You don't need people to stereotype you into these groups of how a gay person should act or how a bi person or how anyone should act because you are who you are like and no one's gonna understand exactly who you are except for you so the minute that you start being true to yourself is the minute that you can start understanding who you are and what's best for you in your life i guess <laughs> sorry i don't know where i was going with that but yeah that was my gay experience i tried to keep it as 
not sappy as possible. I didn't want to go into any of the sad details, but yeah. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. That was a little rant, basically, about what it was like growing up and being gay. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed and give this like and a comment what you think about it. I mean, if you disagree, that's going to fine, I guess. I mean, I don't. So, uh, yeah. Have a nice day.